All right, chemistry, here is your video lecture for the first part of chapter two. Now, like I said, we are not going to cover section one. We're going to skip right into section two of chapter two called units of measurement. What I want you to be able to do after this video is I want you to be able to distinguish between a quantity, a unit, and a measurement standard. I want you to be able to name SI units for length, mass, time, volume, and density. So take note of those. That, that's five different things. So five different SI units I want you to be able to name. I want you to be able to distinguish between mass and weight. I want you to be able to perform volume calculations, perform density calculations, and transform a statement of equality into a conversion factor. So measurements. We need to know what a measurement standard is, so let's start by talking about measurements. In chemistry, we take measurements all the time, but you also take measurements in your normal everyday life. Every time you measure your height, read your watch, take a temperature, or weigh a cantaloupe. In chemistry, specifically, measurements look like measuring quantities, doing experiments, calculating results, using numbers to report measurements, and comparing results to standards that have already been established. In a measurement, a, t a tool is going to be used. You're measuring using a measuring tool in order to compare some dimension. It doesn't matter what dimension you're measuring. You're measuring something. It could be length. It could be um, volume. It could be mass. Whatever. Some measuring tool is being used to uh, measure a dimension against some standard. Uh, for example, uh, example, the thickness of a skin or a skin flap at the waist is used to measure body fat. Right? Calipers are the measuring tool. The thickness of the skin fold is the dimension being measured. Right? We're we're measuring the thing using an object. We're measuring the thickness, or in this case, it would kind of be it would actually be like a length between two points of the calipers um, using the measuring tool. Now, when we go to state a measurement, every measurement is a number followed by a unit. You have to have both. As you go through this course and you go to write down your response, uh, your final answer, you have to include a number and a unit or else it's incorrect, right? The number shows that you've done the calculation correct, correctly. The uh, unit also shows that, but it also shows uh, the scale and uh, quantity that you are referring to. Um, and it, it is very important that we will start using constants in this course. And as you move on to physics or maybe some AP course, you'll see that the use of constants is much more common than you might see, uh, than you might think. The reason I point this out is constants will often have no units. They'll be referred to as naked numbers. They're just a number without a unit. However, that's in order for the specific unit of your answer to come out to be correct. It's not just by accident. So when you do your calculation, you have to include a unit. So let's look at the, uh, these examples here. We have a number and a unit. So 35 meters. 35 is the number. Meter is the unit. 0 0.25 liters. 0 0.25 is the number. Liter is the unit. A number and a unit together is known as a quantity. So 225 pounds is a quantity. 3.4 hours is a quantity when you put them together. Let's talk about the uh, metric system. Oh, too far. The metric system, uh, very closely related to the SI system. It's SI because it stands for International System, even though it was uh, created in France. That's, what, that's why the S and the I are uh, switched around. It stands for International System. It is a decimal system that is based on the number 10. It actually makes it very, very simple to do conversions. Um, it is used in most of the world. Um, at the time I'm writing this, I believe only two or is it three? Only two or three countries in the world do anything but the metric system. The United States is actually one of them. However, but when scientists are working, even in the United States of America, they use uh, the metric system, the, the, uh, the SI system. So uh, when, we use, when we look at units, we have different base units. One unit is used for each type of measurement in these systems. For example, length. For uh, the metric system, they use the meter. 
in the SI system, they also use the meter. For volume, the metric, use, uh, metric system uses the liter. The SI system uses the cubic meter. In the metric system, mass is measured using grams. In the SI system, mass is measured using kilograms. In the metric system, time is measured using seconds, as well as in the um, SI system. And uh, when the metric system expresses temperature, they uh, typically use degrees Celsius, whereas the SI system uses the Kelvin scale. And you do not say degrees Kelvin, you just say Kelvins. And so while these two systems are very, very similar, uh, different units are more commonly used because they're more useful for the people who use them. Now, when we, uh, when we talk about there are these different quantities, we have to be able to describe their base units. And length is one of the things that I listed in the, uh, in the uh, objective. So how do we measure length? Right? We're going to be talking about the SI system. That's going to be our, uh, our most used system in this class. Length is measured using a meter stick. It uses the unit of meters in both the metric and the SI systems. Um, even though we cannot directly go from inches to meters, we do have an easy, simple conversion as a statement of equality between inches and centimeters. The unit of an inch is equal to exactly 2.54 centimeters in the metric and SI system. So one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters, and we'll end up using that in some of our conversions later. So take note of that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. When we talk about temperature, the temperature of the substance of a substance indicates kinetic energy, the energy of movement. Uh, it's measured uh, using the Celsius scale and metric systems. Uh, on the thermometer that we're showing here on this picture, uh, we're showing a temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. The SI system uses kelvins, and we'll use that uh, when we start talking about gases and the kinetic molecular theory. Time is actually measured using seconds. Yes, the age of the universe is measured in seconds in both the metric and SI system. This is actually based on the, an atomic clock that uses the frequency um, emitted by cesium atoms, a sample of cesium atoms, uh, and there actually is a single uh, machine, the atomic clock, that uh, keeps that keeps that standard going. So what we've just shown um, are several um, what, what are called uh, base units. We can actually derive more units by combining base units, by either uh, typically multiplying or dividing. For example, over here, this is meters cubed. How do you get something cubed? You multiply that thing by itself three times. So this is meters times meters times meters. And that makes sense with your experience with volume because in order to calculate the volume of a cube, you multiply its height, which is in meters, its width, which is in meters, by its depth, which is in meters. Those, those are your three meters that are multiplying together. Density is mass divided by volume. Well, if volume is cubic meters and our uh, metric, sorry, our SI unit for mass is kilograms, the unit, the, the unit here is kilograms per cubic meter. Speed is distance over time. You may have heard that. So distance is a length that's measured in meters. Time is measured in seconds. So the, the unit here is meters per second. And we have some more advanced units, which we won't use all that much um, right now. We will in the future, but not right now. We have the Newton, which is kilograms times meters divided by second squared, represented by a capital N for Newton. We have the Joule, which is a unit of energy. Um, and so it's a Newton um, with an extra meter in here. You notice that it's kilograms meters squared. This is just kilograms times meters. This is kilograms times meters squared divided by second squared. Then we have Pascals, which is a kilogram divided by mass times, uh, mass times times squared. There's a Pascal. Now, we won't be doing a lot of figuring of the Pascal. We will use Pascals, but I'll just give you the value in Pascals, or I just most of the time just give you the value in uh, joules. But all of, these, all of these quantities, all of their units are derived by multiplying together base units. <clears throat> so, uh, mass. A, the mass of an object is the quantity of material 
that it contains. Not how much it weighs, not how big it is, it's how much stuff is there. It's measured using a balance. A balance compares two masses, right? We have an object on one side of the balance, an object on the other side of the balance, and we're comparing those two objects. We're comparing how much stuff is in those objects. Uh, mass uses the unit gram in the metric system and the kilogram in the SI system. But I remember in the objectives, I wanted you to be able to distinguish uh, between uh, mass and weight. So let's talk about that really quick. Um, remember, mass is a quantity of matter. You can think about it as how, uh, how much space it takes up, right? Anything that takes up space has mass. It's made of matter. You uh, measure it with a balance. And we use, like we said, uh, the gram or the kilogram, depending on what system we're using, is how much stuff is there, how much material, how much matter is actually present. Weight is actually the force, that's what the capital F stands for right here, is the force of gravity pulling on that matter. So the amount of matter that is present, which is what the measure of mass is, when gravity accelerates that matter towards the center of mass, that is called weight. Right? Uh, we use this, we measure this with a spring scale, we use the Newton as uh, the, the, the unit there. Let's talk about volume, which is a derived unit. Um, this is the space occupied by a substance, not its mass, right? not its weight, but how much space it actually takes up. Uh, we use the liter in the metric system and the cubic meter in the SI system. In this class, we're going to use the liter a lot more regularly. Um, it's a little bit more convenient for us. And if you want to go back and forth between the uh, imperial system and the uh, metric system, one liter is equal to 1.057 quarts. Um, typically, in this class, we'll measure volume using, using either a beaker or a graduated cylinder like we have shown in the picture right here. Uh, we will be calculating uh, some multidimensional units like area has two dimensions, right? That's why it's always squared. It can be millimeter squared, centimeter squared, meter squared, or kilometer squared. Some version of meters, which means it's some version of a length. Length here, length on the side. So three meters by eight meters. In order to calculate the area, we multiply those two numbers. Now, we all know that we go eight times three and we get 24. But did you also notice that we have the meters times meters? Well, that makes it meters squared. Don't ignore these units in here. You actually have to carry out the mathematical functions with the units as well. So if we were to just look, like, look at a one meter by one meter square, that would be one meter squared, right? One times one is one, meters times meters is meters squared. We're gonna apply that same principle when we look at volume, which is a little bit more uh, objective um, driven for this video. Again, three dimensions, right? Height, width, depth. Height, width, depth. So it's a length times a length times a length. Length times a length times a length. So if we go one times one times one, that's still one, but meters times meters times meters is meters cubed. So when we go to do four meters by four meters by four meters on this cube, we're going to go four times four times four, then ends up being 64. But remember, we also have the meters times meters times meters. So that's meters cubed, 64 meters cubed, or cubic meters, sometimes they say. All right. So um, what I'd like you to do is please press pause in the video and calculate the volumes of these cuboids, which means they're not perfectly symmetrical cubes or uh, equal on every side. But please press pause, calculate it on your own. So uh, we have 6 meters times 3 meters times 2 meters. That's 63 cubic meters. And over here on the right, we have 10 centimeters times 4 centimeters times 2 centimeters. That's 80 cubic centimeters. But we also will need to find the volume of irregular shapes, not nifty cubes that we can simply take uh, the length and do calculations. We're going to have weird shaped things like, I don't know, like this rock, I guess. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, partially fill a measuring cylinder, a graduated cylinder. And what we do is we measure the initial volume within the graduated cylinder. So right here would be 50 cubic centimeters, right? Right, measure the water. Then we put the object into the water. That is going to displace water. It's going to push it up, right? It's going to push the water up into the graduated cylinder because of this added volume. 
we'll measure the new volume. So after we've put the rock into the graduated cylinder, the new volume is 70 cubic centimeters. The difference between the final volume and the initial volume is the volume of the object. So we started at 50 cubic centimeters. We ended at 70 cubic centimeters. The difference is 20 cubic centimeters. Where is that 20 cubic centimeters coming from? This irregularly shaped object. So please press pause and calculate the volume for this regular shape based on these two measurements. Right, the final volume is 83 cubic centimeters. The initial is still 50. The difference being 33 cubic centimeters. This object right here has a volume of 33 cubic centimeters. So uh, there are several units for volume. Uh, I've already mentioned that we have the cubic centimeter, which or, sorry, the cubic meter, which is actually very very large. It's not very useful for us in this course. We will use the cubic centimeter more often, as well as milliliters because it's actually very convenient to convert between cubic centimeters and milliliters. As you can see over here, one cubic centimeter is exactly equal to one milliliter. So what this allows me to do is if I have a measurement in meter, cubic meters, or cubic centimeters, I can make an, an easy equality a straight, a straight across to milliliters, and then now that I'm in liters, I can uh, milliliters, I can convert into liters very, very easily. But these are statements of equality that you need to fill in and you need to remember because you may use them to create conversion factors later in the video. One decimeter cubed is equal to one liter. One centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter, which is one thousandth of a liter. So we're going to talk about density here. Remember, density is a derived unit. It's a mass per unit volume of a substance. The SI units would be the kilogram for mass and the cubic meter for, uh, for volume. The more common units that we'll use in this class are going to be grams per cubic centimeter or grams per milliliter. So we have these different cubes of different substances, and they all have the exact same um, dimensions. It's one meter by one meter by one meter. But steel, a uh, uh, one meter cubed um, chunk of steel is going to have a mass of 7,800 kilograms. So this is 7,800 kilograms per cubic meter. Wood is going to be significantly less. That's down to 500 kilograms per cubic centimeter. And just a sample of air is going to have a, a density of 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. So the density of uh, a substance depends on the type of substance, right? The type of substance it is. Steel is more dense than wood, is more dense than air. So let's check out this sample problem. I'll work this for you. Lead has a, a mass of 22, sorry, uh, a chunk of lead has a mass of 22.8 grams and its volume is 2.00 cubic centimeters. What is its density? Well, I know that the mass of this chunk of lead is 22.8 grams. Its volume is 2.00 cubic centimeters. I know that density is equal to mass divided by volume. Right? We already said that it's mass per unit volume. And so we take the mass, 22.8, uh, we divide it by the volume, 2, and we get 11.4. But don't sleep on the units. It's grams divided by cubic centimeters. So the units are grams divided by cubic centimeters. Uh, so uh, just a little background on the SI system. Uh, is an internationally agreed upon uh, choice of metric units consisting in base units um, from which all other units can be derived, right? And so uh, we have grams, meters, liters, degrees Celsius, and seconds. And we have a couple statements of equality for you over here. Uh, don't, don't sleep on these. One kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. One kilogram is equal to uh, 2.205 pounds. One meter is equal to 3.280 feet. One cubic meter is equal to 1,000 liters or uh, 264.2 gallons. Right? This may be useful for problems that you end up working. So remember this slide. Um, I've been using terms like milli and centi. Right? When I was talking about centimeters, centimeters or uh, milliliters, this is what makes the metric system easy. This is what makes the metric system easy. If I have a gram, I have one gram. If I have a milligram, I have one thousandth of a gram. You see that? It's 0 .001 grams. When I say milli, I'm really referring to 
0.001. So I have a milligram, I have 0.001 grams. If I have, uh, I'm talking about a, uh, a meter, right, I'll have a meter. If I have a centimeter, centi refers to one hundredth, right? So 0 0.01 is one hundredth. So if I have a centimeter, I have one hundredth of a meter, 0 0.01 meters. Now these are uh, the prefixes. These are not units. They're prefixes that you put on a unit. Uh, but these are the things that you're going to have to be aware of. Mega means a million. Kilo means a thousand. We'll use kilo a lot. Hecto means a hundred. Deca means ten. Deci means one-tenth. Centi means one-hundredth. Milli means one-thousandth. Micro means one-millionth. Nano means one-billionth. And we're going to go on a pico is times 10 to the negative 12. Femto, which we probably won't ever use, is times 10 to the negative 15. So let's see how we're doing. For each of the following, indicate whether the unit describes a length, a mass, or a volume. So, bag of tomatoes, kilograms, that is mass. A person is two, uh, two meters tall, that is a length. Uh, 0.50 grams of aspirin, that is mass. Uh, 1.5 liters of water, that is a volume. Now identify the measurement that has an SI unit. SI unit, not metric, not imperial. SI. So, Johnny's height. If I'm measuring height, what unit should I use for the SI system? Meters. All right, a race is being timed. So it's time. What unit do I use for the SI system? Seconds. Now here's a tricky one. Mass in the SI system. Mass in the SI system. Kilograms. Kilograms. And lastly, temperature in the SI system. In the SI system. Uh, sorry, Kelvin. Kelvins. All right, conversion factors. This is going to be a huge deal for you, a huge deal for you in this class. If you cannot do this, you will struggle for nearly the entire course. So please put your thinking hats on here. A conversion factor is a ratio derived from the equality between two different units that can be used to convert from one unit to another. Now, we all know that these statements are true, that if I have four quarters and one dollar, that's the same amount of money. Four quarters equals one dollar. One dollar can be broken into four quarters. And so when I divide an amount of money by the exact same amount of money, I get one. Same thing over here. One dollar is the same thing as four quarters, just with different units. I divide this amount of money by this amount of money. It's just one, right? Not only do the numbers cancel out, the units cancel out. And here's another way I can uh, draw this. 0.25 dollars is equal to one quarter. Those divided by each other is, are also one. This is key. A conversion factor, when you divide it by itself, has to equal one. That's a really, it's an important key to remember. Divide it by itself, it has to equal one. So here's a, a sample for you guys. If I want to convert five kilometers to meters, how many meters are present in a kilometer, I can't just multiply by a thousand because I know Keeley means a thousand. Remember in this course you have to show your calculations, show your work, and you have to do it my way. So here's how you do it my way. You start with your five kilometers, that's what you're converting from, and you create a conversion factor. Right? Remember I had one dollar over uh, four quarters? We have to have two distances that are the same. One thousand meters, that's the same distance as one kilometer. And I have these color coded here. This M, this uh, uh, meter, is the new unit. It's the unit I want to go into. That's why it's on the numerator. It's on the top of the conversion factor. Kind of in this uh, weird green color here. Kilometers are my old unit, the one I want to get rid of. And I have to put that on the denominator. On the denominator. What that allows me to do mathematically is cancel them out. Anything divided by itself is one. And if I'm just doing multiplication here, multiplying by one doesn't change the value of anything. I don't have to write it at all. So I get to cancel them out. So I'm left with my new unit and only my new unit, which is meters. And then I go to my calculator and I plug in five times 
1,000 for 5,000. All right, guys, this is one I want you to try, so go ahead and press pause and try this on your own. So we're converting from 7,000 meters into kilometers. So let's start with what I'm starting with, the 7,000 meters. That's always going to be a thing for you to do. Start with what the problem gives you. Now we're going to multiply by a conversion factor. Now I need to pick two numbers that are the exact same distance. I know that I'm going from kilometers to meters, so what's my statement of equality? For every one kilometer, I have a thousand meters. So there is my conversion factor. Now the reason that I knew to put the meters on the bottom on this problem is because it's the unit that I want to move out of. It's the old unit. And the only way that I can convert out of my old unit is to have um, this unit that's on a numerator appear on the denominator of my conversion factor. That way they'll cancel out. The only unit I have left is that kilometer because everything else cancels out. So my answer will be in terms of kilometers. I, now I just get my calculator. I take 7,000, multiply it by 1, still 7,000, divide it by 1,000 for a total of 7 kilometers.